All right, we're back, and we're going to be looking at one other magnetic concept here, which is magnetic flux. Um, just like we we do for electric fields in Gauss's law, to find the total flux coming out of a charge or some object, uh, we can also define flux for magnetism. And keep in mind, generically, when we talk about flux, we're, we're talking about the amount of stuff. This is our very technical definition here times the area that that stuff is flowing through. So for magnetic flux, our stuff is a magnetic field. Okay, so it'll be the amount or strength of magnetic field times an area that it's going through. Now what's kind of interesting about this is if, if we do Gauss's law for a magnet. Keep in mind that the only magnets that we know about have both north and south poles. We've, we've never been able to separate them into what we would call magnetic monopoles. So what's weird about this is magnetic field lines, anything that comes out of the north pole is going to circle back around and go into the south pole. So the, the direction of your compass needles, your vectors, would point um, from north to south. And if you do any kind of Gaussian surface around this, and surround a magnet, um, your flux through a closed surface around that magnet, we'd write it something like this, it's always going to be zero. Okay, there is no net flux from a magnet. And that's the mathematical way of saying there's no such thing as a magnetic monopole. It might not look like much, but that's actually one of Maxwell's equations. One of the four fundamental essential equations that explain all of magnetism and electricity. Now we're going to uh, try a case where we, where we do have flux. Rather than a closed surface, we could just have like a, a loop, a loop of wire or circuit or something like that. So we have kind of this, this funny looking picture here with a, a rectangular hoop of wire below a, a straight wire with a current running through it. And our goal is to find the flux through that rectangle. Now unfortunately, um, because we know from Ampere's law that the magnetic field created by that straight current is going to look something like this. It depends on little r, it depends on how far away you are. So, so the flux like at the top of this rectangular loop is going to be bigger be, um, than the flux at, towards the bottom of the loop simply because the magnetic field is stronger closer to the straight wire. So we can't just multiply magnetic field times area and be done with it. It's simply not going to work because our magnetic field changes. Um, basically that means we have to set up some kind of integral. Now this little this little dashed line, I'll, I'll shade in this little skinny um, rectangle here. That's a little slice of the area of the rectangle. And what we can do is we can find a small amount of flux that's going through that little rectangle. So that's going to be a magnetic field, which we have from Ampere's law. Okay, that, that's the strength of the field at that distance r away from the wire, going through that, that little skinny rectangle, times the area of that little rectangle. And according to our picture, um, the length of it is constant, that's that's the L on the picture, and we'll call the, the, that little width, we'll call it dr. Okay. So, as always, if, if you want to get the total flux, you have to add up all of these little fluxes. Now, r is the variable, that's what changes from little slice to little slice of area. So, again, according to our picture, we have to go, we have limits on r, going from the side closest to the wire to the far side. Okay, adding up all those little, little fluxes to get the total flux. And in the end, if we work this out, um, we can pull out constants. Um, the L is a constant, we pull that out, all over 2 pi. And our integral that we're left with is dr over r, which is going to be natural log.
Okay, so you get the natural log of r. We have to evaluate that from b to a. I'll just write down the final answer. You can fill in a line or two of algebra if you want, but but this turns out to be our final answer here. Okay, well let's, you know, final answer is always important. The most important thing is just to realize how we set this integral up in the first place. Uh, this is a, a pretty popular picture that you find on AP exams, for example. It's, um, it it kind of mixes a few different ideas together. So we used Ampere's law to find out the strength of magnetic fields. We integrated um, using our definition for flux to find this total flux. And in the end, we get this crazy thing with a natural log in it. <laughs> Okay, so um, hopefully this kind of outlines just the, the general notion of magnetic flux. And every so often, yeah, we might have to do an integral um, because these magnetic fields, they vary with position. So depending on your problem and picture, um, that'll determine what we have to do to actually solve it. So I hope this helps. Until next time, we'll see you later.